Hello everyone, this is me with another book review. Um, I picked something that I thought it's gonna be really good and it turned out to be really good. Uh, I talk about Gabor Mate um, and Daniel Mate, The Myth of Normal. Um, I really wanted to read this book uh, just because I also believe that we are living in a toxic culture. Uh, I, I will be honest with you, I was thinking about going live and talking three hours about this book, but then I was like, okay, uh, someone would be better off reading it than listening three hours, but who knows, maybe I will go live one day to, to present such a good book. This book shows how the society that we're living now is toxic and it's producing a lot of effects that we label them as diseases but a disease is always happening in a context. Um, <laughs> I took so many notes, I tell you, like, this is how much I have written from this book. It's it's so complex. Uh, first of all, um, Gabor says in the book that there is an ancient battle uh, within ourselves. Uh, the battle between being authentic and uh, between having attachment. And often enough, we choose to... Uh, kill parts of ourselves or hide parts of ourselves uh, in order to gain attachment. This can happen with our early caregivers and later in life. And this is the root of disease. Um, Mate uh, Gabor uh, thinks that it's very important to talk about what trauma is and we have two types of trauma trauma with a big T and trauma with a small T. The trauma with the big T is everything that we're thinking about, like abuse, uh, violence, uh, like the worst things that you can think about, that's trauma. But there's also like the small uh, T trauma, the little things, you know, uh, not having an emotional connection with your mother or with your father when you are a baby. Uh, every time when you got bullied or belittled. So it's very important to realize that trauma is something that it's happening inside of you because of what is happening outside. So this perspective gives you power because you have if you know that trauma is something inside of you, then you can start to work on it and you feel empowered rather than thinking that there's something that happened outside and you can do nothing about it. Um, he also talks about the HPS um, uh, axis of uh, uh, stress. It's like um, three main components uh, from our um, brain are uh, responsible for stress management and this is like a highway the HPS highway it's about the hypothalamus the pituitary gland and the adrenal glands um, and this highway manages the way that we can cope with stress um, stress is literally killing you it shortens the length of the telomeres uh, but there are also some things discovered by science that if you go and have healing relaxing experiences they can somehow reverse the effects um, yeah, we are living in a society that is very stressed in comparison with how people used to live a hundred years ago, for example. Um, the book is um, divided in a couple of parts. Part one is about our human nature. We are, uh, we are social beings. 
and uh, we need to interact and this is why our need for attachment is sometimes bigger than our need for authenticity unfortunately um, I found some interesting facts that if you are unhappily married uh, you are um, much more likely to be ill than if you're not married at all so a bad partner can literally uh, steal days from your life um, uh, having a bad job is worse than not having a job at all and a very important discovery that I have found for me very good and revealing is the fact that there is no such thing as genetic uh, destiny. Uh, every gene activates in a certain environment so it is the environment um, that makes certain genes activate so there's no such thing as a gene for schizophrenia for example there's no no there are environments that lead to some genes to be activated think of the human being as a seed if you plant it into bad soil it could be a million dollar seed and it will rot so that's very very important um, there's also talk about racism and people of color die so much faster and they are so much prone to asthma, asthma and um, death just because racism is an enormous stress factor on the human body. I found that astounding and um, I think um, I should also talk about pregnancy and giving birth. Um, I'm sorry to say but in most places pregnant women are treated really bad. Uh, the doctors they do not let nature do its job and uh, the c-section is so so common and I do not have enough time to tell you how bad it is to deprive uh, the woman of the natural birth process and also the baby um, and I really like the fact that in this book uh, Gabor's wife Ray uh, says that when a woman gets pregnant the man should also think of himself as being pregnant and people should treat pregnant women with enormous respect and care because there is a sacred thing building inside of her that is a child and I think we have lost the respect uh, that we have to have for the creation of another human being inside of another human being so this is quite sacred and unfortunately it has been oh, dirtified by the rush of the medical system hmm. uh, part two is about the human development and how our human nature what's our nature um, and there's also talks about the child about the needs of the child and uh, I like the quote that the kids are here in order to learn their own song so we should not try to impose on them things that we as adults think that they would be great for the child um, very interesting for me it was the fact that again backed up by science the fact that there is such a thing as paternal depression I I used to think that it's very important to take care of your body before you conceive I'm more than happy to find confirmation backed by science in here because it has been proven um, that if the, ch if the father is stressed 
uh, before conceiving, uh, that, that stress is going to be found out in his sperm and that's going to affect the child and his development and his coping mechanism to stress for his lifetime. So this is serious and there was experiment with rats that if the mother was healthy, she had no stress issues and she got uh, pregnant with a male mouse that was utterly stressed, no matter, like, regardless of how caring and loving the mother was to the baby, the baby was affected for life in his, he was much more prone to anxiety, to high stress um, hormones throughout the entire life. I think there is not enough publicity about this and people should know this before even trying to conceive and I do not blame that there are so many kids with and there there is some research with ADHD uh, because there is a factor in how people and how parents uh, manage to uh, attune with their children and their mental development so if the caregivers are stressed because they are living in a toxic culture guess what the children will be affected too um, it's it's mind mind-boggling mind-boggling and um, again I think uh, Oh, I discovered a beautiful quote that I liked. I tried to translate it because I read the book in Romanian. Um, the quote goes something like this. There is, there is no clearer revelation of the soul than uh, of the soul of a society uh, as the way in which the society treats its children. So the way a society treats its children, it reveals the soul of that nation, of that society, Nelson Mandela. Oh yeah, very, very true. Um, I also think that I should mention, and maybe I will not win a popularity contest with this, but neither did Gabor uh, <laughs> wins uh, about the fact that we we have this belief that going to school that that is going to build the brain of the child and the schools are being put on such a pedestal and uh, it's wrong because in the early years the brain of a child is built through play and uh, um, parents need to play more with their children. They they should stop thinking about after school, after after school, as a way to ditch them, in a way, and to offer them variety. No, this is so wrong. Uh, think about the the tribes that. Uh, existed and they, they still exist where adults used to spend a majority of their time with their children uh, and there was nothing wrong about it they they were, weren't thinking about after after schooling the same goes with your babies like uh, the the biggest brain growth for the child in the early years is going to happen through play and through interaction with their caregivers but now pregnant women most in in a lot of countries the maternal leave is significantly low like there are babies where like at six months old the mother has to return to work this is severely abnormal and uh, this is why we have so so many issues so many issues I, I can't even count um, there's also talk about neuromarketing and uh, the way that a lot of companies uh, they consciously t 
target their marketing to the a very sensitive brain of the child I think this is ethically very wrong um, it's so much information but there are two things that I think are very important uh, that Gabor did with this book he he stated four principles for healing the four A's authenticity autonomy anger and acceptance authenticity just be yourself just be yourself and accept yourself autonomy assume responsibility for your life or what's happening and you have the possibility to choose who you want to be that's empowering anger there is healthy anger and it is so much related with the capacity of saying no it is <laughs> these two letters no like this word will save you so much and unfortunately um, cancer and uh, a lot of this very bad diseases related to autoimmune uh, diseases um, they are related to the incapacity of the person to say no for example ALS and multiple sclerosis the patients are like the nice people and this is why they get ill because they have no no boundaries they can't say no they're too nice and they get sick because of it acceptance just accepting things and people as they are and accepting how difficult it is to accept that is a form of acceptance um, Gabor also created a method uh, um, a kind of inquiry something like you could do this on a weekly basis and I think this is one of the best parts of the book uh, that it gives people something after talking about how toxic is this culture how we how we modified everything how we did it digitalized everything like we think now it's normal for a child at two or four years old to have a phone in their hand and just stay there that is going to affect his uh, the brain section for language and and for and horrible ways it's devastating but this compassionate inquiry that Gabor offers are is a series of questions that you should ask yourself on a weekly basis or if you can't at least once a month and this is going to help you it's like these are some questions that will help you realize how much are you giving up from yourself from your true authentic self in order to fit in in a sick society because this is the thing that's happening now we believe that adapting and being normal in a toxic society it's good like we have normalized the toxicity and it's absurd and uh, this question there are like six questions where am I saying no in what kind of situations it's the toughest for me to say no um, what what's the impact of not saying no in my life how is this affecting me um, what kind of bodily signals suggesting me that I'm not doing it right by not saying no is the, my body signaling to me so what am I ignoring what kind of pains in my body am I ignoring um, what's the hidden story behind my inability to say no where did I learn the the story of saying no of not saying no uh, when did I not say yes to what I wanted uh, what 
desire for play or for exploration am I ignoring and why? This is a very good, very, very good um, suggestion to do. And uh, I will end this with <laughs> something that I must tell you, it surprised me. It was the um, ayahuasca experience of Gabor Mate and the further a study on psychedelics and the benefits of, of such substances of, of course used under uh, some specialized supervision just yeah don't, don't, don't go now and <laughs> just use psychedelics because Gabor Mate did but um, I think I think this book is so complex and uh, it sheds a light on some things that maybe some people are afraid to say because they would have uh, economic consequences because of course if people would be happy uh, they would no longer fear the need to buy 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 to do 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 you know and they would just be more peaceful with themselves but unfortunately um, <laughs> for some interests and for some parties it's um, vital for people to be continuously stressed worried on a run never having time to think or never having time to relax because such kind of people are always consuming the pharma industry is winning a ton of money and people are getting sicker and sicker kids lose their parents and they do not lose their parents physically like they're physically gone not only that but they lose their parents spiritually and emotionally like there are parents that are not present in their children's life emotionally they're like dead inside you know it's that ambiguous loss that Esther Perel was talking like someone is in the room with you but they're not really there and as you look into their eyes they're thinking of something else and I think this is devastating for the kids and the fact that uh, a society a society is formed with the help of children and if we do not help mothers and fathers to feel like they can be relaxed financially, emotionally while having a ch child, this society is going to go down really fast. Um, I think this is a, a vital book that, you know, what I think, I think that years from now, when things will have gone wrong really badly, Specialists will turn to this book and think, oh, oh, so someone predicted the fall <laughs> and the, the issues and uh, we need to, to rethink medicine all over again and not make it about the diagnosis. We have to make it about the context, about the childhood of an individual. It's not always about the pill and the diagnostic. A lot of doctors don't ask their patients about the emotional life, about the really things that matter. And Gabor really, really hits the, uh, the nail on the head without the fear of saying things that should not be said. And that's what I like about him a lot. So yeah, I definitely recommend you reading this book and it will, I don't know, hopefully enlighten you. Uh, thank you very much for watching and see you next time. Bye!